Today we're stepping out of the studio and into the hospital. We're going to visit the intensive care unit at St. Joseph's Hospital and see all the life-saving procedures that go on there. We're with Dr. Joseph Preston. He's a critical care specialist here in the intensive care unit. And we're with Jose. She is an uh, intensive care nurse. She's not sick, as you can see, but she's going to be our model today, our model patient. Joe, so, you know, a lot of people see uh, intensive care units on the TV. They may not have had a uh, been a patient in the intensive care unit. Maybe they didn't have a family, but they see it every day on TV. So I want to clarify some of the things that go on in here. What, why do people go into an intensive care unit? What does it mean? Usually to be admitted to the intensive care unit, there are certain criteria. And often those patients require a form of life support or a ventilator to be on a breathing machine, or their blood pressure may be too high or too low, requiring medications to support that. In addition, they may be having arrhythmias. Their heart rate may be too fast or too slow, and they need to be on continuous medication and monitoring. And what about the nursing staff? Is the nursing different? Are there more nurses per patient, or how does that work? Depending on the acuity of the patient, it may be one nurse to one patient, or at maximum two nurses per one patient. On a regular floor, how many nurses are there about? Anywhere from four to six patients to one nurse. So they really here they need more intense hands-on nursing. Correct. It seems like every one, every intensive care, this is a brand new one, it's, it's spectacular. Everyone is on a monitor to show their EKG continuously in case they get too slow a heart rate or too fast. And their temperature is always being recorded. How their breathing pattern right here is always being recorded. And then we have a continuous readout of their blood pressure. Um, and if any of these things go away, there's alarms that go out to the nursing station. But what about all the bags and, and the bottles at the side of the bed? Now, so this, there's four here, but what are in these bottles? It may be medications to keep their blood pressure up. It may be medications to, to lower their blood pressure. In addition, it could be medications to control their heart rate or to support their heart rate. So, so you can have two bottles or you can have eight bottles. Absolutely. So, and each day these are adjusted based on the needs of the patient. Correct. Okay. Then as the person gets sicker, especially with their breathing, then the next step is the respirator. Why don't you tell us about that, how right. that works? Right. So, so that's what you often hear about patients being intubated. And patients uh, require, if they're having difficulty uh, breathing, um, to come to the medical intensive care unit to go on a form of life support. It may be temporary or more chronic. And uh, what we do is we use this endotracheal tube. We put it in their mouth and it goes just below the vocal cords. You can see this balloon here and that balloon is pumped up to secure that airway and allow all the oxygen to be delivered to the lungs. Now sometimes you see uh, the tube is actually here uh, in the lower part. Am I hurting you? No. In the throat here. And, and that is just a more permanent um, or semi-permanent uh, protection of the airway. It is essentially the same device. It's called a tracheostomy and that is a stoma and we uh, have a more permanent airway uh, as we are trying to wean a patient from life support. So when it's in the throat, that looks uncomfortable. Is it uncomfortable? Yes, the, the analogy I use with my patients is um, it's like snorkeling. So it's as if somebody's holding your head under the water with a tight mask on and you have to breathe through a tube. Um, so patients get very agitated, it, it's very uncomfortable, so we often have to sedate the patient to make sure that they're comfortable while they're on the machine. So for the entire time that that's in, they get some type of sedation? Usually, correct. And when you put that in, you give them more, uh, a little boost of sedation? We sedate them, what's called conscious sedation. Mm -hmm. So we use medication uh, so they can't uh, feel or remember anything. Then uh, that has to be hooked up to this respirator. How does that work? So this uh, respirator just connects here while the uh, tube is in place. Um, and then to my right here is the ventilator. So why don't you show this ventilator delivers oxygen. 